Today we're talking about the latest crypto adapter, Joe Biden. That's right, America's gonna be the new kid on the blockchain. Now of course when grandpa's getting involved in the newest tech trends, you know stuff is about to go off the rails. Now unsurprisingly, the federal government is having a much rockier time rolling out a coin than some dude with photoshop and a picture of a dog. Now the basic conflict at the core of all this is how quickly to jump onto the crypto rocket, which is currently hurtling back down towards earth. Now President Biden, well he is ready to YOLO his way into an initial coin offering tomorrow. The Chinese, they have their cryptocurrency out there, what's taken our treasury so long? Yellen on the other hand is arguing that we gotta tap on the brakes here a little bit. There's some major ethical and structural considerations that need to be discussed regarding how crypto will be managed and implemented. So let me start this episode by painting with an incredibly broad brush, because you're going to quickly see a pretty alarming picture coming together out of this whole thing. So cryptocurrency, if done wrong, is a surveillance state's dream come true. Now, because I'm weird, the way I think about crypto is by picturing just the largest online bean counter out there. You fully control your own little pocket, and you can give or receive beans from other people's pockets. So far, so not controversial. Now, in your typical bean transfer, this works by yelling at some sort of program. Hey, AI, move my pintos from my pocket to that guy's wallet. Now because it's a decentralized exchange, you don't have to get permission from any sort of higher authority. The program simply says, beep boop, yes I will scrape 5 pintos from you and distribute it to him. And then it takes it from your wallet and puts it in his wallet. In this case though, things would be different. You'd have to say, hey federal government, I want to move 3 lima beans from my pocket into his. Can you please make that happen? Now as you can imagine, if not handled properly, this could lead to all sorts of problems. Because they control the ledger completely, the government would not just be the distributor of this currency, but also, on top of that, the ones in charge of controlling all of the transactions. It's this level of currency control that's never been previously imagined. No wonder China was the first ones to the finish line with this. So with that sort of Orwellian world that I introduced, uh, it's time to get a little more specific with our conversation. So recently the Federal Reserve released a report laying out in brutal detail their plans to take everything crypto bros love about cryptocurrency and head in the exact opposite direction. Okay, okay, okay. hear me out. What if it's an incredibly centralized currency, let's be in the central bank and all, and very easy to regulate? Wait, where are you guys going? Now because I'm a glass half full kind of guy, let's get started with the positives. Now the benefits largely fell into three categories. It would stabilize the cryptocurrency system, it would lead to online dollar dominance, and it would lead to an increased number of Americans who have access to some form of online banking. So first, the fascinating geopolitical argument. We gotta beat the Chinese cyber yuan. Now when China released their bean shifting system a few months ago, it sent a bit of a shockwave through the financial community. Remember. The government is sort of the god of their own crypto system. For example, you could have something like, oh, America sanctioning Iran and saying no one can wire money to them. Well, here's Iran's pocket and here's my pocket. Let's just scoop up five fava beans and give it to them in exchange for some oil. Sorry, America. Or if to put it more recent, Say you had an alliance with a country that was recently kicked out of the swift money transferring service, but still wanted to engage in international commerce. Cyber Yuan. You're just shifting numbers around on a closed ledger. Iran could then shift those Cyber Yuan or Russia to anyone else in China's Cyber Yuan system and no outsider could do anything about it. 
Now of course that means for person B to spend it again, they would have to keep working in your little cyber yuan system. No cashing out unless someone can wire you money. Now the major concern amongst Americans in this case is that our special little ledger that we're working on over here but haven't released yet might not be the primary ledger moving all these beans around in the world over the next century. The second argument is the idea that the government needs to stabilize the crypto system because some coins now govern more money than medium sized banks. Things have gotten so out of hand that there is currently an alive and well debate as to whether certain coins should be considered too big to fail and regulated accordingly. So basically the government is looking at these hundreds of billions of dollars being managed by unregulated coin companies in the Cayman Islands and saying, gee, that really doesn't look good. If those investments were to go up in smoke, it would be just like a medium sized bank, poof, disappearing. That could be financially devastating to the country. Furthermore, there would be next to nothing America could do about it. A US dollar coin would allow crypto investors to put their money into a similarly tradable coin that the government could guarantee would maintain a dollar value. That would take a lot of systemic risk out of the equation, although tied to the value of the dollar? Not sure you want to anchor yourself to that sinking ship right now. The last major benefit is the most benevolent of the motivators, and hence the least interesting. Being nice? <laughs> Wake me up when they're spying on us. A US dollar cryptocurrency would provide a lot more people access to the financial system and end quite a bit of exploitative practices currently targeting poor people. Want to send money abroad or to your friends? That's going to cost you a pretty penny if you want to use a service like, say, Western Union. Instead, why not hand out US digital dollars instead? You got a wallet, they got a wallet, doesn't matter where anyone is, we'll shift the beans from your account to theirs. Borders? Thing of the past. Just hand this incredibly traceable currency to all of your foreign friends. While I'm at it, do you know any Iranian scientists who might need a loan? Now similarly, this would provide huge advantages when it came to things like making stimulus payments more accessible to every American. Do you remember the sheer endeavor that was sending everybody a check for $1,200? Heck, that was the first time my generation had ever seen a check. Now with the digital currency on the other hand, the Federal Reserve could theoretically expand their account crediting practices to every individual with a wallet. $1,200 stimmy check? What do I look like, your grandfather? Check your crypto wallet. I just gave everyone in the country straight crypto cash. For anyone who says we should bail at Main Street like we did Wall Street, well, here's the keys to the kingdom. Now the last accessibility argument rests in the fact that a whole bunch of Americans right now don't have access to bank accounts. Uncle Sam says, why not skip that step entirely and get people into the exciting world of cryptocurrency? Now that might sound ridiculous, but it would offer a rigid system for people without banks and bank accounts to send money, receive money, and develop savings in US dollar denominations. With those major benefits out of the way, it's time to take a second look at this glass. And oh no, upon further inspection, looks like it might actually be half empty. Of course, the first major drawback is something that we went into a bit earlier. There are some major privacy concerns with making the government judge, jury, and executioner of payments and savings in this coin. They control the ledger, which means they could just sift around the money however they want. This covers the day-to-day -day concerns about being able to block payments and having a complete access to all records of payments made with this currency at their beck and call, but it also means that, if I don't like what you're doing, they could just scoop up some coins from your account or slide a few extra coins in there. No rules beyond the rules that they put on themselves. 
So as you can imagine, people are very carefully looking at exactly how these people choose to bind their hands when it comes to the darker side of the gray area. The best we've got to address this issue right now is hiring private sector intermediaries to handle some of the touchier customer data issues. It's never a good sign when the federal government is looking to chase bank to provide it with some trustworthiness and credibility. Now another major concern of the Federal Reserve doing this reads a lot less like something you'd hear from Jerome Powell and a lot more like something you'd hear from BitBoy69's YouTube comments. Go to the comment section of this video to see what I mean. What if this cryptocurrency does so well at being an alternative to banks that it truly becomes an alternative to banking? People start taking their savings out of the banks in mass where woohoo I'm earning half a penny a year in interest and instead shift all of that savings into this central bank dollar. Now there is literally a pretty large section of this report that goes into detail on how banks can only make loans if they have depositors money in reserves. If everyone flocks out of the banking system to buy US dollar crypto coins, that's going to be a problem for financiers. Now, the federal government has considered and is publicly proposing two solutions to this issue. First, no interest on this US dollar crypto, you're missing out on half of that pretty penny. Or second, limiting the amount of US cryptocurrency an individual's wallet can hold. Or maybe, and this is just me throwing out a third option, this might all be the epitome of wishful thinking. Hmm, if we release a cryptocurrency, we're gonna have to be fighting off hordes of people trying to get as much of it as possible. After all, everyone loves crypto and would be stoked to adapt it into their daily lives. And lastly, there was a pretty large concern about cybersecurity. If a major part of your economy is based on a currency that entirely relies on an internet connection to access and manage, you better have a contingency plan if the internet goes down or a cyber attack takes place. The solution? Something I never thought I'd read. Central banks are currently researching whether offline central bank digital currency payments options would be feasible. Huh. If only there was a central bank managed asset that could be exchanged without internet access. Guys, we took the scenic route to get there, but I think we just reverse engineered cash. Large takeaway to this video, it seems like the American government releasing a cryptocurrency is less of a question of if and more of a question of when. The big thing holding back the release right now is balancing different concerns and benefits of the currency. Specifically the concerns of a lack of privacy, reliance on internet, and taking liquidity out of the banking sector, and the benefits of stabilizing crypto, supporting dollar supremacy in the new world, and giving the unbanked access to payment and saving services. Let's just really hope that Elon Musk tweets about our new cryptocurrency, that would help us a lot. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And lastly, if you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching.